Wow, what an incredible scene. And as far as we know, that's the first time more than one oarfish has been filmed alongside a diver, isn't it? That's right. And as far as I know, only one person before filmed with one oarfish. So, um, absolutely historic moment. Impressive. Well, tonight we're kicking off a new night and a new season of River Monsters, and it's a big one. For the first time, Jeremy's exploring the mysteries of the ocean, and it only gets wilder from here. I'm glad you're back in one piece. Yeah, me too. It's always nice to explore underneath the waves, but it's, it's good to come back up. Right. Nice to surface. Well, I'm executive producer Lisa Lucas, and as a premiere night treat, Jeremy Wade is joining me for a lightning round after show. Tonight, Jeremy's answering questions from you. Plus, we're showcasing photos of your monster catches at the bottom of the screen. Send us your best shot using the hashtag RealMonster, that's R-E-E-L Monster, on Twitter, Instagram, and on the River Monsters Facebook. Okay, Jeremy, let's get to some questions. Are you ready? Let's go. All right, we have one. First one's from Andy L. Do you think swimming with a fish is better than catching one with a rod? I don't think one is better than the other. They're alternatives. Um, what I normally do, fishing in rivers, the water is generally pretty murky, so you can't see what's there. You can't jump in and see the fish. That's why I use a line. The great thing about the ocean, you've got that water clarity, so you've got a choice. You've got the best of both worlds. You can pull them up on a line or get in with them. And it's nice that now you, we're, we're seeing you do a little bit of both on River Monsters. Yeah, it's, it's nice to be doing something new and, and, and different at this stage in the game. Great. So many seasons in. Jonathan N. wants to know, did you ever have an episode where you ended up giving up or came close to giving up? You almost came close to giving up tonight, didn't you? Yeah. We were rooting for you, Jeremy. We've, ha we've had a lot that where it's been really close to the wire, um, where you think it's just not going to happen. The one recently that stands out is the muskie in Canada. Just not happening. The fish of 10,000 casts, I'd gone well beyond that, and suddenly this outrageous reversal of fortune that happened. I mean, that was incredible. The fact that it's difficult and sometimes you nearly don't do it, that's what makes it worth watching. Exactly. Corinne a F. asks, how long has your hair been white? It's super debonair. It is debonair. I was born with white hair. No, I wasn't actually. So it was early <laughs> We've seen it getting a little, a little bit whiter over the years, yes, haven't we? Yes, yes. Uh, early 20s, I think, and it's uh, just been getting whiter ever since. And I think um, all the stress for catching fish maybe made it a little whiter. Yeah, you, you have Animal Planet to blame for some of that, I, I think, think. I think, yes, it's accelerated in the last, uh, the last seven years. I'm sorry about years. that, but you wear it well, so I'm not going to complain. Let's get to some more questions. This one is from Bob H. What new skill or old skill did you have to learn or improve for ocean fishing? Um, well, actually, I think the big difference for me was being on a platform that's just moving in all directions and is, is trying to tip you over. So it's just trying to do everything that I normally do uh, and actually stay standing up, stay not falling over. That, and that's quite a big, you know. A lot to do all at once. It's quite, and yeah, look good in the process. It's, yes, it makes sense. Exactly, exactly. So it, actually not easy, just that one little extra thing. All right, well, Jeremy has a lot of underwater close encounters this season, and he's using some special equipment to help us feel like we're right there with him. Tell me about this mask we have. Right, this is... It's um, very heavy. It is quite heavy. heavy. It's, it, it's big. I mean, your normal scuba half mask just goes over your, your eyes and your nose. This, mm -hmm. is, this is a full face mask. And um, this red thing here right. is a microphone, and this is an earpiece. And so this is all about communications, and there's three things. I'm talking to the cameraman because we have to do a certain amount of choreography under the water, and without this, we can't communicate except by gesture, which is very imprecise. Mm -hmm. um, I also communicate with the boat, so that's all about safety. And possibly most important from our point of view for, for TV is, is it's recording everything I say. It's not enough just to show the fish and to show the process. We're trying to give the viewer a sense of the excitement that I'm experiencing, what's going on in my head, and convert it into, into what comes out of my mouth. It's emotional. It's not, it's not about information and yeah. that kind of content. Um, so rather than come up on the boat and go, yeah, that was great, I saw this and that, you're actually getting it in the moment, and it's, right. yeah, it's just that much more immediate. And and that's what makes the difference, I think, for viewers. It's that much more immersive. We're, we're experiencing it as, as you are. Yes. Well, imagine if the scene we saw earlier tonight was silent. Let's take another look at that. Now you're saying I'm not doing totally well at the moment. That's that's Jeremy's language for I'm about to pass out. I mean, we could hear you 
breathing heavily. You can hear the breathing as well. I mean, that's a very good case in point because without the sound, I mean, television is all about pictures, but sometimes without the sound, it loses this whole dimension. And the sound there is just me flapping around and you're watching it and you don't know what's going on. You add the sound and suddenly it makes sense. Yes. Well, Jeremy has one more critical gadget when he dives and it isn't high tech, but it's definitely a necessity. Here's a bit of detail that didn't make it into tonight's episode. There's no delicate way of putting this. Where you, you know you can't really you can't really um, relieve yourself in a dry suit. Well, you can, but it's not a good idea. It's a very very bad idea. Um, so I've actually got something here, and um, there is a tube here that I need to go along with this device here. Um, I need to go and connect this up in a minute. Um, it's also the first time that I'm going to use this particular device, so that I can um, maybe after an hour underwater, you know, if I need to have a pee. I haven't got to get out of the water, I can actually do it there and then. Um, so that's that's one of my tasks for the day. Well, is, we didn't have enough detail there, so so we need a little more explanation. Tell, tell me about this. What was in that little bag? Well, uh, okay. During this new season, sometimes I was diving in pretty cold water. And the thing about cold water is, uh, if you wear an ordinary wetsuit, you're, where the water just sloshes through, you're going to get very cold. So I was wearing a dry suit, and the thing about a dry suit, you're nicely insulated, but you're wearing these these thermal layers uh, inside. Nothing can slosh through, right? You, you, you know, you just must not, uh, you, you know, you must not uh, relieve yourself in there. So this thing here, well, this was the, um, that's what you saw poking up out of my, my dry suit. And this is, um, this is what goes on the uh, relevant uh, part of the anatomy <laughs> there. Uh, this rolls the rating down. just changed for this after show. Yeah. Uh, you roll it down. Uh, there's actually very strong adhesive on there. Oh wow, that, yeah. that's not going anywhere. Uh, which means, well, you've got to have a, you've got to have a perfect tight fit. So mm -hmm. it takes a few minutes to get on. It takes about a quarter of an hour to get off and lots of screams <laughs> coming out of the, the cubicle. Yeah, and then when you've got that on, basically you uh, you connect it up to that tube. And you're good to go, but you know, like you said, it's low tech, mm -hmm. and you know, it's it's you know, we can have a little bit of a giggle about it. But in terms of the quality of the experience, w without this, you're either having to cut your dive short, or you're facing a lot of discomfort, which takes your mind off the job in hand. With this, it just becomes so much more comfortable and enjoyable. It's great. It's the best thing I ever had um, you know, in terms of gadgets. One of the best things you can have. Even more significant than some of the high tech stuff. Absolutely. Well, we're glad to have it. Let's get to some other questions. Here's one from April T. Do you need a personal assistant? I can relocate. That's an offer. Yeah, very <laughs> nice. I, I, I could do. I, I, I think I'd be a rather Dickensian employer. I don't think that the terms of employment would be a bit sort of beyond what most people. You, you don't accept. think? I mean, she might have a good time going all over I the place. Don't know. I think keeping you organized. That, that keeping could be. me organized is, 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 is impossible. <laughs> I think it's, it's a thankless task. Well, we get lots of questions like those from River Monsters fans who want to go fishing with Jeremy. Well, now you can. This is real Jeremy. That's R-E-E-L Jeremy. And you're invited to send your best shot of this guy hanging out with you. Go to animalplanet.com slash real Jeremy to print one of your own. We'll be featuring your photos of real Jeremy during Animal Planet's Monster Week at the end of May. All right, let's get back to some more questions. Those are insane pictures. Those are some examples. <laughs> Sean Joseph M. wants to know, have you ever mistakenly hooked a cameraman? I have nearly hooked a cameraman on, on a few occasions. Normally when I'm fly fishing, so you've got the hook sort of whirling backwards and forwards, and normally everyone's out of the danger zone, um, but the cameraman needs to get in close and, 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 and get the shots is the thing. Um, who I have actually hooked on a few occasions has been myself. Um, which... And that's been fun to watch. Sorry for you, Jeremy. I know, ex ex exactly. I always know. Whenever anything like that happens, it's always... I, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of two different personalities in those moments. There's me thinking this is, this is a bad moment for me personally. But for, for TV, Jeremy, I, this is going to be TV gold. You know, there's blood streaming out of my <laughs> finger or whatever. They're going to love it. Here you go. And then it. you spend the rest yeah, of the shoot yeah. with a giant bandage on your thumb. Well, there's a lot more ahead and many more firsts on this season of River Monsters. You uncover some real surprises this season, don't you? Uh, yes. I mean, there's a lot of things uh, that I haven't done before. Let me see. I was handling some of the world's most venomous creatures. I, what on earth was I thinking there? I but I've, I've, thinking, I've but survived. I'm still glad here. you did it. Well, you're not going to want to miss it. River Monsters and Finding Bigfoot take over Thursday nights right here on Animal Planet. The big night of monster hunting continues. A brand new episode of Finding Bigfoot starts now.